Welcome folks, a video today on vector representations. So in this video, we'll define a vector representation. It's going to end up to be, in fact, an invertible linear transformation. Um, we'll see how that allows us to characterize vector spaces in terms of vector spaces of column vectors. And we'll talk about this coordinatization principle. Okay. So here is the definition of a vector representation, sort of a busy slide here. Uh, in any case, uh, V is a vector space. V has a basis B. We define a function rho sub B as follows for every W in our vector space V, rho sub B of W, the image of, rho of W under this transformation rho sub B is an element of C sub N and those elements in rho sub b are the coefficients of the linear combination of w in terms of the basis vectors in b. Okay, so again here, um, because b is a basis of v, any w has a unique representation as a linear combination of those basis elements. So the way that we get rho sub b of w is to write that linear combination and then just pick off the coefficients to go into a column vector of size n. Okay. So again, um, the input here is a vector in the vector space V, and the output is a vector in the vector space of column vectors. So rho sub B is a transformation from V to Cn. As we'll soon see, rho sub B is linear, rho sub B is injective and surjective, thus invertible. Okay. As it turns out, um, when B is a standard basis, computation of rho sub B is quick. But when B is non-standard, computation of rho sub B takes a little bit more work. So we'll see both of these cases in examples. Okay, so here is the theorem that says rho sub B is linear. To see this, we'll just show that the image of the sum is the sum of the images and that the image of a scalar multiple is a scalar multiple of the image. To see that the image of the sum is the sum of the images, we'll take two elements of V Element X has a representation A1, V1 out to AN, VN. Element Y has a representation B1, V1 out to B1, BN, VN. Of course, their sum has representation A1 plus B1, V1, all the way out to AN plus BN, VN. So the vector representation of the sum is A1 plus B1 down to AN plus BN, which of course can be written as A1 down to AN plus B1 down to BN which is just the vector representation of x plus the vector representation of y. Scalar multiplication works similarly because um, alpha x is just alpha a1 v1 all the way out to alpha a n v n. We know that the vector representation of alpha x relative to the basis b is alpha a1 down to alpha a n. This can be written as alpha times a1 down to a n, which is just alpha times the vector representation of x relative to the basis b. Okay, so this function rho sub b is linear. Let's go ahead and see a couple examples. Let's take a vector in C2, I'm going to call this vector 2, 4, and find the vector representation rho sub b of w relative to the basis b. And here we'll start with the standard basis. Okay, so in order to um, get this rho sub b, this vector representation of w relative to the basis b, we'll start with a linear combination of W in terms of elements of, of the basis B. Now when, as I mentioned, when B is a standard basis, this linear combination is pretty quick, right? We can see pretty quickly that A1 had better be two, A2 had better be four, and that is exactly the vector representation of W relative to the basis B. So rho sub W, rho sub B of W is two, four. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a different example. Same vector, but a different basis. So here are the vector w and the basis 1, 1, and 1, minus 1. 
Okay, so similarly, we'll start with W as a linear combination of elements of B. So W has some representation B1, V1 plus B2, V2. Okay, so in terms of B1 and B2, we have a linear system to solve, right? And, and that linear system has form. So reducing the augmented matrix to a reduced row echelon form, we see that B1 has to be 3, and we see that B2 has to be minus 1. Pick off those coefficients from the linear combination, and that is the vector representation of W relative to the basis B. Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to try this out on your own on the worksheet with um, the same vector and, and a different basis. So let me ho know how that goes. We can talk about it in class. Okay, things get a little more interesting when the vector space in question is not the vector space of column vectors. So here is an element P of X from P2, the set of all polynomials up to and including degree 2. So let's go ahead and find the vector representation rho sub B of P of X, the vector representation of this vector P relative to the basis P2. And we'll start with the standard basis. So to start with the standard basis, we'll go ahead and think about uh, P of X as a linear combination of these standard basis vectors from P2. Okay, so I'm taking E1 to be 1, E2 to be X, and E3 to be X squared. Okay, so it's quick to see, that in this case, that A3 has to be minus 6, that A2 has to be 10, and similarly that A1 has to be 15. Okay, so that's the vector representation. Rho sub b of p of x is 15, 10, negative 6. Okay, here's another example with a non-standard basis. So let's go ahead and have a look at the non-standard basis 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus x plus x squared. So to get the vector representation of p relative to this basis b, similarly, we'll start with a linear combination of p in terms of elements of the basis B. So here's that linear combination. P of X is B1 times Q1 of X plus B2 times Q2 of X plus B3 times Q3 of X. We can see pretty quickly that there's a linear system of three equations and three unknowns for us to solve here. So here's that linear system of three equations and three unknowns. It's pretty quick to see that B3 is negative six if B3 is negative 6, then B2 is 16. And if B2 is 16, then uh, B1 turns out to be 5. Okay, so um, just solve the linear system and find that the vector representation of P relative to this basis B is 5, 16, negative 6. Okay, so there's opportunity for you to work on one of these on the worksheet too. So check that out and we can talk about it in class. Here's a theorem, the function rho sub b is an injective linear transformation. We'll go ahead and prove this. We proved this by showing that the kernel of rho sub b is trivial. Let u be an element of the kernel of rho sub b. Then of course the image of u under the transformation rho sub b is zero. Now of course that means that u can be written as a linear combination of vectors v1 out to vn, a basis, for the vector space V, such that each coefficient is zero, and that tells us that U has to be the zero vector. Okay, the kernel is trivial, um, so rho sub B is injective. Rho sub B is also a surjective transformation. To show that rho sub B is surjective, we'll go ahead and, and construct uh, an element W of the vector space V such that rho sub B of W is U for any U, showing that the range of the transformation is all of Cn. So if U is an arbitrary element of Cn, we'll go ahead and just pick off those coefficients in U and set the vector W to be U1 V1 all the way out to Un Vn, the linear combination of basis elements. Then, of course, in order to um, find the image of W under the transformation rho sub B, we just pick off those elements again. 
So again, the image of rho sub b, the image of w under the transformation rho sub b is, is exactly u, which tells us that, um, that the range of rho sub b is all of Cn. The function rho sub b is an invertible linear transformation, of course, since rho sub b is injective and surjective, it's bijective. So linear transformations that are both injective and surjective are invertible. Okay, a couple quick comments about the inverse transformation. Um, given a vector space V with basis B, and given an element U that's in CN, um, rho sub B of inverse of U is an element of V. And it turns out that rho sub B inverse of U is really quick to compute. It's just a linear combination of the vectors V1 out to Vn in terms of those scalars U1 out to Un from the vector U. Okay, let's talk about a characterization of vector spaces. Here's the theorem. Suppose that vector V is a vector space with dimension n, then it turns out V is isomorphic to Cn. The proof of this theorem is pretty quick too, relying on this vector representation. When V has dimension n, V has basis V1 out to Vn. So rho sub b with domain V and codomain Cn is an invertible linear transformation, i.e. an isomorphism. So we write that V is isomorphic to Cn. Okay, this is pretty cool. And the take home message here is that any finite dimensional vector space is isomorphic to a vector space of column vectors um, where n is chosen to be the same as the dimension of the vector space v. And the isomorphism is this, um, this vector representation acts as an isomorphism. Okay, so here's an example. Identify n such that the vector space of column, the vector space of polynomials degree 8 or less is isomorphic to Cn. Since the dimension of P sub 8 is 9, P sub 8 is isomorphic to C9. Here's another example, the crazy vector space. We saw that this set of vectors R is a set of vectors that is linearly independent and spans a crazy vector space. There are two vectors in this set R. The crazy vector space therefore has dimension 2. So we see that the crazy vector space is isomorphic to C2. There are a couple more examples for you to play with on the worksheet of these um, characterizations of vector spaces in terms of vector spaces of column vectors. Okay, let's talk about the coordinatization principle. Um, the coordinatization principle says that when U is a vector space with basis B, and S is a linearly independent subset of U if and only if the image of S is a linearly independent subset of Cn. Um, this is a direct result of uh, our theorem from injective linear transformations that tells us that uh, images, of, images of linearly independent sets are linearly independent themselves when the transformation is injective. Okay, again, since rho sub b is invertible, it's injective, so s is linearly independent if and only if r is linearly independent. Similarly, um, for span, a vector u is in the span of u1 out to uk if and only if the image is in the span of rho b of u1 out to rho b of uk. And, and again, this has to do with surjective. Okay, the take-home message here is that we can talk about linear independence and span in a vector space U by looking at the isomorphic vector space of column vectors C sub n. So here's an example. Let's go ahead and, and talk about uh, the set D and P2 via coordinatization. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use the standard basis and identify a set of three vectors um, that is a linearly independent, or that is a, um, the image of of these three elements in, in D under the um, transformation. Okay, here's that set of vectors under, um, under the, the transformation rho sub B, where B is the standard basis of P2. Okay, so the theorem says that linear independence of 
d if and only if linear independence of c. So how can we tell whether three vectors in C3 are linearly dependent? Uh, just construct a matrix with those, those vectors as the columns, reduce to reduce row echelon form. Here's what you find. We conclude, and, and here I've said the set F, I guess, instead of the set C, but we conclude that F is linearly dependent in C3. And that tells us that the set D is linearly independent in P2. Okay, similarly, we can show that, um, that a set is a basis, right? A, a set is a basis if it's linearly independent in spans. Um, so D is a, is a basis in P2 if and only if the image of D under um, this coordinate representation is a basis in C3. So we'll go ahead and coordinateize relative to the standard basis in P2. Here's what you get. Um, how can we determine whether these three vectors are a basis for C3? Well, just stick them in a in a, a matrix and reduce it to reduce row echelon form. And we see that um, that matrix reduces to the identity. Therefore, these three vectors are linearly independent in C3. Allows us to conclude that F is a basis for C3, which also allows us to conclude that D is a basis for P2. Okay, folks, hope you have enjoyed this video on um, coordinatization, the vector representation of, a, of any vector in a vector space relative to a given basis. Um, big take-home message here again is that any finite dimensional uh, vector space is isomorphic to a vector space of column vectors of size n, where n is the dimension of the original vector space. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you next time. So long for now. Bye-bye.